I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright. This week, our topic is detachment. Today's Setup Sunday, I am discussing emotional detachment. Detachment is an interesting concept. Detachment is the state of being objective or aloof. Now, it's very important that we slow down and we kind of observe this. Being objective or aloof are two completely different states and two completely different sets of energies. And I think this is really important to understand because the definition just lumps it all together. Being objective is a 200 courage energy. This is where we enter the mountain and we go into the green zone. When you're in 200 courage, you're objective because you're alert and you're focused. You have conscious mind control and you are in the identity of event, awareness, and response. This is the state of expansion based energy courage. Now being aloof, which is part of the definition, is a 175 pride energy. This is the red zone. When you're in this state of being aloof, the ego has conscious mind control. You are in the identity of event, judgment, reaction. This is the state of restriction, base energy fear. Yet, the state of detachment is defined as both objective and aloof. When you are in detachment and aloof, you are stuck in your cage mind. This is emotional detachment. You are in your subjective reality and detached from the objective reality what is. When aloof, your ego is very strong. The 175 pride energy is the strongest energy that the ego has. You're stuck in judgment. When you're stuck in judgment, this means your subjective reality of what you believe should be, is not being met and not matching the objective reality of what is. Behavior is to be removed from the conflict activated. In other words, you're avoiding the conflict because you're in judgment. You're not dealing with it. You are in detachment. Now, if you're in Conflict avoidance, which is fear, the energy, the state of restriction, base energy fear, you are removed from the conflict physically, emotionally, or both. Simply put, you're not forthcoming in dealing with the conflict. Behavior can, in, when you're aloof is cold and distant. And many believe this detachment is the way to deal with problems. Yet, it cannot possibly work. The simple reason, the conflict has not been brought to resolution. If you don't bring the conflict to resolution that's causing you to become aloof, to go into pride, to be righteous, and more importantly, to be in a detachment, you can push that conflict down all you want. But it will still be there, and it will reactivate. This is not bringing the conflict to resolution. Now, objective detachment is much different. So you can't lump these two together. It is very different. To be objective, you must move out of the ego. To be objective, you must move out of the cage mind, out of the head. You must pause and you must connect to the creation mind, your true self and heart. That's the only way you can be objective. When you are objective, you are moving in to what is, into the moment, into the now, or into the conflict. When objective, you are in awareness. So the conflict activated is not judged. Objective detachment is letting go. You are not being influenced by the energy of the conflict. So you are not influenced by the feelings that you are having. In the state of objective detachment, you actually move into the 310 willingness energy. This is called the shift state. 
You do this by conflict is activated. You become aware, still point. You go into 200 courage. 200 courage automatically rises up to 250 neutrality. Now you're flexible. And the state of objective detachment, you then move into 310 willingness. Here is where you are ready to listen. This means you can hear the objective facts of what is. You are willing to learn. Here, you are not influenced by the opinions of others or by your own programmed identity, your own perception. And here, you are able to do. You bring the conflict to resolution. You respond objectively to what is. And you can, in this state, you can move into a response. This is what it is. You're not in detachment anymore. You're, you're, you're moving in. And we're going to see how objective detachment works because you can move into response. Conflict comes to resolution. You can move into reflection, give some time and respond, or you can let go. That is objective detachment. You're detaching from, from the feelings and you are dealing with the behavior in the now. This is finding a now. You're in the process. You're dealing with it. You detach and the conflict comes to resolution. Now this week, we will be addressing detachment. And to bring us in, we'll talk on detachment to bring us into optimal health. We'll talk about detachment to let go of the want of control. And we'll talk about detachment to find true happiness. And we will discuss consequences of decisions. All of this will be tied to objective detachment. But for today, let's discuss emotional detachment, the identity or the ego detachment, the aloof pride detachment. This is emotional detachment. To clarify, emotional Detachment is the unwillingness to deal with the conflict and the emotions activated versus objective detachment of dealing and being willing to deal with the emotions of the conflict activated and letting go. Those are the two different things. They are not one thing, as the dictionary wants to tell us. So emotional detachment is the ego, bottom line. It's your ego. It's your programmed identity. It is being disconnected or disengaged from the feelings of other people. It's also being disconnected and disengaged from your own feelings. You don't want to feel this. So what do you do? You become detached. I don't want to feel this. Emotional detachment creates behavior from you. One is you. There's a couple types of behaviors. One is you not dealing with the conflict and the emotions you are feeling with. You repress, you run away, you just change the mood, do a drug, drink alcohol, eat some food. You just don't deal with it. That's detachment. And two, an unwillingness or even inability to deal with emotional lives of other people. So you detach, and in many, in many cases, this is to protect yourself. See, I'm not going to discount this because emotional detachment, a lot of times, is to protect ourselves from past trauma. So when you have past trauma, this is very heavy things to carry in your cage mind. See, you can have trauma as a small child. It doesn't go away as an adult unless you deal with it. Most people don't deal with it. They don't even know why they get uncomfortable in relationships or, or in certain situations, but they want to detach. So they detach so you don't feel the stress, the hurt, and the anxiety, and the fear from your past. Now, this actually sounds good, right? Who wants to feel that? And in the short run, it actually can be good. There are moments you have to detach because you cannot possibly deal with it. You may not be in a high enough habitual state to deal with it. And you have to detach so you don't become depressed. There's no judgment here. I understand this very, very well. I've been through this. This is where detachment can actually be beneficial. But it, for the short run, it cannot be in the long run. See, in the long run, you could detach from the conflict, 
But we always have to understand this. It's important. You are still carrying the conflict in your mind. It follows you everywhere. Even if it's not activated, it's still affecting your habitual state. That habitual state is determined by that programmed identity. It's the programs that you carry in the caged mind subconscious. 95% of your behavior derives from that cage mind. So if you're carrying something, a conflict, you are going to react unconsciously. Reaction, you create unconscious behavior, and this is building your current reality. But it's a fact. Emotional detachment many times can act like a coping mechanism to avoid dealing with an unpleasant situation. But like I said, it can't be a long-term. At some point, you're going to have to face it. There are a number of signs that you might be trapped in emotional detachment. And when you're trapped in emotional detachment, it's a very strong ego energy, so it's very unconscious. And remember, in our behavior, it's going to drive us to behave in reaction. So it's fast. It's it's automatic. There's no thought behind it. You, you're doing things that you don't even know why you're doing it. And that is the reaction. The decisions are made in reaction instead of response or reflection. So there are a number of signs that you could be trapped in this, but the main causes are past experiences. It's your past. That's what causes it. It's your past that puts you into this emotional detachment. But it's not always. It can also be set as a small child being programmed in stage one of development, impulsive mind. See, these programs could be set that causes you to be this way because that was your tribe. And what happens to the child in those first few years of their lives sets their primal need for attachment. So we're talking about detachment. What about attachment? A child must feel connected. I'm talking infant child. I'm not talking, I'm talking about newborn child. If the child felt connected to the caregivers, they will develop what's called secure attachment. This allows a child to grow without the want of approval or this emotional detachment. And they will have healthy relationships. They'll be able to detach from the caregiver and accept the caregiver when they come back. But if a child felt fear when separated from their caregivers, and you're talking about infants, the child will be more anxious about separation and they'll develop emotional detachment. And as what will happen as adults, they'll start to avoid relationships. They'll have a strong want of approval, strong want to belong, which creates this avoidant attachment, which is detachment's other factor. It's you go, you avoid attachments, you create emotional detachments, so you're not ever connected to anyone. And you're experiencing things like that you want to be alone. I'm a loner. I, I, I have people with this attachment might have social anxiety, but many times emotional detachments come in from experiences such as abuse, neglect, and trauma. So you go into avoidance and this is what happens. This was set as a child. So it's not always the experiences that we have. Sometimes it's just the programming we get. Either way, if you have signs of emotional detachment, it means we must move that identity, that's that that identity, that programmed identity that is setting your reality, that's creating your routine, that's driving your behavior in all your relationships, especially that most important relationship, the one with you. We must let that identity go. That's the process of stress mastery. Conflict resolution. We have to dig into there and we have to self author a new identity, a new relationship program. This is what would bring up self worth. When we talk about emotional detachment, that's low self worth, people. And I'll talk about it this week. 
So what are some signs of that you might have emotional detachment? Well, you might have ambivalence towards others, having mixed feelings or perception distortion, causing contradictory attitudes. You just want to argue with people. You have mixed feelings about people. You 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 just don't you really don't get along or connect. You might if you have emotional detachment, you might avoid people. You might avoid situations or activities. You find yourself avoiding a lot. Slow down and see why. Why am I avoiding this situation? Why do I not want to do this? You might have, and this is important, if you have emotional detachment, you might have difficulty empathizing with others. You can't have empathy. You don't feel sorry for them. You can't feel their point of view. You are, remember, when you have emotional detachment, you're aloof, which means you are in 175 pride. Why is it the worst energy? Because you feel justified. You don't feel anything. So you're not going to have, you're not going to empathize with people. Do you have difficulty opening up to others? Because those with emotional detachment will not open up. They'll wear a mask. They'll wear their social mask. They'll wear their identity and they'll create this identity, but they, you will not know who they are. Even when they're in a relationship, you won't know who they are. And if you have emotional detachment, you might feel disconnected from other people. Like, I don't really belong anywhere, or I don't really get along with this. I don't feel that kindred spirit. You feel disconnected from others. Now, there are other, other signs if you have emotional detachment. You might have poor listening skills. Why? Well, if you're stuck in 175 pride, you're always thinking of what you want to say while somebody else is talking. You're not really listening. In other words, you, you remember, you can't, you're not ready to listen. So you're not in, you're not in um, objective detachment where you're ready to listen. You're willing to learn, able to do. No, you're shut down. So this is creates poor listening skills. If you have trouble listening, you might be stuck in emotional detachment. You don't care. You know, you don't realize that you're doing this, by the way. This is the ego running your life. I'm not in judgment because stop thinking that you're the ego, people. Stop thinking that you're your behavior, your past, things like that. That's not you. We have to separate those eyes. It's very important. Stress mastery, one of the first things we do is we name the ego. Step three is stress mastery. Why? Because we want to separate the voice in your head and your heart. There's two different frequencies there. Now, for sure, I will tell you this for sure. If you have emotional detachment, you're going to have trouble maintaining relationships. You just are. Your relationship life category is going to be activated all the time. Always conflict. And I'm not just talking about intimate relationships, although those will for sure be activated. I'm talking about all relationships. With your kids, with your coworkers, with your neighbors. You're going to have problems maintaining relationships. And I don't mean that you might be friends with somebody for 30 years, but it's never going to be an expansion relationship where uh, both people are allowing them to grow, where they're excited for your growth. No, no, no. You're going to have trouble maintaining relationships because you'll want to control it. If that person starts to grow, it's going to activate you strongly. And I would say, if I had to put one more on emotional detachment, you're going to have problems expressing emotions. When you become aloof, eh, you justify. You think you know everything. You think everybody else is stupid or, you know, I don't need to deal with these people. You're struggling with feeling the any positive emotions. You get stuck in a negative. You talk to the negative. Everything's blue. Everything's out. Oh, everybody's out to get me. Oh, you can't trust anybody. Oh, this and that. And you, uh, you really struggle strongly with positive emotions. You don't have many positive emotions. They don't work well for you. Why? Because you're stuck in the red zone. You're negative. Of course, they're not going to work for you. So this week is going to be a good week. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. So let me see the slate for this week. Let me grab it. So the topic is detachment. And David will have his Monday with the super millennial view of detachment and millennials. On health huddles, we're going to talk on part two of the process of creating successful weight loss. I'm going to talk about detachment there very strongly because it's one of the most important things that you need if you want to create successful weight loss, which means you lose the weight and you don't gain it back.
And then on Wednesday's Meeting of the Minds, we're going to talk on, we're going to get really into detaching the want of control. And this is a big one because we're going to talk about detachment, right, from being happy. Then we're going to talk, <laughs> you're going to say, wow, I don't want to listen to that episode, but trust me, you do. On Thursday, Connection Thursday, we're going to talk on decisions and consequences. And then on Friday, we will continue our book study, Never Finished by David Goggins, which I don't know which chapter this is, but it probably tie right into what we're talking about. And then on Saturday, we will discuss detachment with our very own Coach Peggy. So this week, our topic is detachment. I think you guys will enjoy this. And it's a good, it's actually a little bit confusing if you look it up. Like you say, you know, when they're when they when they say detachment is a state of being objective or aloof, it can't be. It can't be because they're two different states. And so I wanted to make that clear today. There's a big difference between objective detachment, which we'll talk about this week, and emotional detachment is what we talked about today. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I look forward to the comments and I look forward to hanging out with you this week as we talk on detachment. That's it for today's show. Our mission is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.